In baseball, you don't make it to the postseason with just one pitch. You need a repertoire, a variety of pitches to lean on. And that's what Jillian Weissa displays on both a small and large scale in her wonderful collection, The Book of Goodbyes, which explores a love triangle from a variety of angles. Weissa is an expert at tonal shifts, juxtaposition, and shrewd reversals. Her sentences can sometimes seem simple on the surface, but like a pitcher flourishing in October, Visa changes her velocity, her grip, unleashes a heater followed by a changeup, a cutter, a screw. Look at the opening lines of, I've been waiting all night. Notice how she embeds an imperative between two sentences that seem straightforward. I reckon you were asleep with your girl before the phone rang. Make something up. I've been waiting all night to tell you about the couple in post-war France, the woman fresh in her grave. In that three-word second sentence, make something up, the words seem to be delivered a couple octaves beneath the blasé conversational voice featured before and after. Make something up. This is not the lashing fury of Anne Sexton's for my lover returning to his wife. This lover has already returned. This is the other woman brazenly and unapologetically waking up two sleeping people side by side. When we consider the intense awkwardness of that situation, the jaunty cavalier talky voice of the speaker lifts off the page even more. There's something powerful about how the poetic speaker of this book has almost taken the scarlet letter off of Hester Prynne and now boldly wears it just for kicks. In another poem called Café Loop, which may be a partially a pun on the restaurant with the same name, the title has a different spelling, it's as if Isa invites a few of the opposing team's pitchers onto the proverbial poetic mound and lets her rivals proceed to throw pitch after pitch at her own head as they whisper horrific insults juxtaposed with a highly pleasant setting. We can almost hear Prufrock whisper the MFA students come and go, talking of Michelangelo. <laughs> As Visa mixes up pitches in individual poems, she also varies her approach on a broader scale. There's a wide range of styles in this book. For instance, in the middle, there's a long allegorical tale about highly literary finches who live at Iguazu Falls in a cave in Argentina. But the finch story echoes the love triangle in the rest of the book. And remember, the, foot, the finch is a songbird, i.e. a poet. Another fun thing about the book of goodbyes is how the lovebirds all seem to write poetry, which lays the groundwork for a pleasing narrative arc. In this book, unlike most stories about adultery, in this book, the other woman wins. Not because she ends up with the guy, she doesn't. And not because she has moved on, though that is satisfying. No, the speaker's big victory is the act of writing itself. In one delicious poem towards the end of the collection, but not far from me, the ex named Big Logos impotently leaves a string of obsessive messages on the speaker's office voicemail. The fact that it's her office phone makes it all the more degrading, which is part of the fun. And Big Logos confesses that he's not writing anymore, that he is artistically spent, so to speak. So the poem itself is a kind of a victory, a testament to the fact that the poetic speaker is not only okay, but flourishing, singing her lucid and original song. Please join me in welcoming Jillian Visa. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Thank you to the Academy of American Poets Thanks to Brenda Shaughnessy, Susan Wheeler, and Jeffrey McDaniel. You are the reason I'm here tonight. And to my editor at BOA Editions, Peter Connors. Semi, semi dash. The last time I saw Big Logos, he was walking to the quantum physics store to buy magnets. He told me his intentions. He was wearing a jumpsuit with frayed cuffs. I thought the cuffs got that way from him rubbing them against his lips, but he said they got that way 
with age. We had two more blocks to walk. Once I do this, what are you going to do? He asked. I wish you wouldn't do it, I said. Big Logos bought the magnets and a crane delivered them to his house. After he built the 900 megahertz superconductor, I couldn't go to his house anymore because I have all this metal in my body. I think if you love someone, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Build something like that on purpose right in front of them. I'm going to read Cafe Loop, which is in Voices. She's had it easy, you know. I knew her from FSU back before she was disabled. I mean, she was disabled, but she didn't write like it. <laughs> Did she talk like it? Do you know what it is exactly? She used to wear these long dresses to cover it up. She had a poem in the Atlantic. Yes, I'll take water, me too, with a slice of lemon. Oh, it must be nice to have the Atlantic. Oh, she's had it easy, all right. She should come out and state the disability. She actually is very dishonest. I met her once at AWP. <laughs> Tiny, limps a little, but it's not really noticeable. What are you going to have? Oh, I can't decide. How can she write like she's writing for the whole group? I mean, really. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> it's kind of offensive. It's kind of a commodification of the subaltern identity. <laughs> Should we have wine? Oh yeah, let's have something light. It makes you wonder how she lives with herself. Oh, I wouldn't mind. I would commodify and run. She's had it easy. I can't stand political poetry. She never writes about it critically. If it really concerns her, she should just like write an article or something. I heard she's not that smart. My friend was at school with her at FSU and he said actually she isn't that smart. I believe it. I mean, the kind of language she uses. It's so simple. It's elementary. <laughs> My friend said she actually believes that her poems have speakers. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if the book is called Amputee and you are an amputee, then you are the speaker. So new criticism. Really, I don't like her work at all. I find it lacking. And this will be my last poem. Thank you all. Poem for his girl. I'll tell you which panties look good on you. Psychedelic plaid with ruffles on the waist. Patriotic polka dot. The whale print is very, what is his name again? Those would look good on you. Those too, those too, those also. I could see you wearing those in his truck out past the Esso station to the field party. That one time you got drunk and fucked around with some of his friends. And he cracked six beers and felt old and drove to the cemetery and pissed on your father's grave. <laughs> Here he comes around the corner. Are you writing about her? I hope you're not still writing about her. 
If we went shopping, I mean today, damn it. You could ask why I'm sleeping with him, then push me into the hangers. I'm not supposed to try you on anymore. The dead walk into poems all the time. No one complains.